So you have full hookups, a hiking trail with a suspended bridge, a huge playground, a bathhouse with showers, and live music on the weekends. I don't know, Reed City, Michigan, this RV park, it kicks some So we found this park in Reed City called Rambat Park and we couldn't believe everything you got for 20 bucks um, and I could find no reviews on it at all. So we made a reservation for $20 a night. You had 30 amp water, bathroom, showers and everything was open. and. They had live entertainment. Um, we're like, what? Live entertainment? So we stopped in. We loved it so much, we stayed an extra day, um, only because it was just so quiet, and it was really kind of cool. Uh, Reed City did it right. Um, they made a park within a park, an RV park within a park, and this is their city park. And they've got like a nature trail that goes right into town. Um, Ironically, it ends at the liquor store in town, mm -hmm. and uh, it's 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 really beautiful. They've got a suspension bridge that you walk over, um, and it's really a cute little place. They have like 13 sites, um, the, very clean, very clean. So anyway, you can see the full review on Campendium. Just look up Rambolt City Park in Reed City, Michigan. On our way up to uh, the UP, it's right up. It's right off of 131. I mean, right off the highway. You can kind of hear cars going by, but you have great uh, cell service, and uh, um, you know we use our hotspot for internet, and so it was awesome. Reed City, Michigan, Rambat Park. They have uh, electric, water, and a dump station right over there. And we're off to Mackinac City. So after we left Reed City, about maybe 15 minutes into the trip, our battery light went on and uh, we had to figure out what was wrong pretty quick. Ends up it was our alternator and we're in Midland, Michigan getting that fixed and it's been interesting. So the question is, what do you do when you break down? Not your RV, your tow vehicle. The one thing that you need the most to get you from point A to point B. Uh, not a bad breakdown. We learned a couple things about our van that I did not know. Uh, the good, uh, the bad, um, but we are in Midland, Michigan. Um, and so we're gonna kind of go over what to do when your car breaks down. You are in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you could call AAA or road service, but they may not get to you right away, if at all. And especially when you're driving down these country roads, so Ariane and I had a plan from the very get-go and we'll share that plan with you. So first of all, excuse the noise, we are literally on the corner of the major intersection here in Midland, Michigan. So it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty noisy and there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. We are literally in the parking lot of uh, the mechanic that we found to fix. Uh, they have been just awesome. They're letting us stay in their parking lot tonight the van is in the shop and uh, they even gave us an extension cord so we could power our things uh, for the night. Uh, Midland's a pretty safe area, it's a pretty nice area, so we're not really too worried about uh, anything tonight, uh, but um, kudos to to these guys that letting us that let us do this. So before Ariane and I got on the road, we made a conscious effort, or at least I did, 
to really learn about the 1999 Ford E350 diesel. And what I found out about the diesel that probably saved us in this situation was that not only does it have one alternator, but it has two. It's actually called the ambulance package and it was, lot, it was made for cargo utility vans, specifically the diesel that they used to use as ambulances for rural areas. Well, having two alternators saved us because when the one went bad, the other one just kind of picked up its duty and kept us going, really, uh, until we could get to Midland. The next choice then we had to make was how were we gonna detach where we were gonna go? And as I drove assessing the mechanical aspects of the van, Ariane got busy and she went way ahead and started calling mechanics, started calling parts and services, um, trying to make arrangements where we could stay. The first place we went to was Walmart in Midland, Michigan. Uh, Ariane called, said, hey, you know, there hadn't been a review on Allstays app about this Walmart for like three years. So she called and they said, absolutely, you can stay here, no problem. And so we had a safe place to go. We had resources. O'Reilly's uh, Auto Parts was in town. I called them. They said, yeah, come on in. I think we have the part for you. And so that was our plan to actually tap in to the, the closest town that we knew we could get to before one, we fried our battery and boiled it. Two, the other alternator stopped working. And three, we, there was no other place to go but Midland. I mean, there was no other place to go other than boondocking on the side of the road. And that's not something we wanted to do. So when Scott says we have a problem. I slightly panicked, I'll be honest, for a split moment in time because he wasn't telling me exactly what the problem was. I think he was registering what the problem was. So by the time I received the information, my mind was already in overdrive, trying to figure out, okay, what do I need to do? There's a lot of responsibility on the passenger to navigate where you need to go and while we had kind of discussed already what our roles were when driving. I was not prepared exactly for, for having to figure out exactly what I needed to look up in terms of repairing something. I have absolutely no idea what an alternator is. So there was a split moment where we kind of had to work through it. And then immediately following, I was really, really proud of how we were able to navigate a situation not knowing exactly how long we had um, until we needed to find help or we were going to be on the side of the road. So I got right to it. I just, just started looking up auto body shops, mechanics. Uh, unfortunately, we were driving on a Sunday in the middle of almost nowhere and nothing was open. Um, so I attempted to call a couple of, uh, you know, O'Reilly's, auto parts, anything that I felt like might be open on a Sunday to try and help diagnose remotely the problem so that we can understand what we were up against. I think Scott had a really good idea of what we were up against, but we kind of needed help in figuring out exactly how long we could go. We were getting closer and closer to a decision. We could route ourselves up 127 and cut off a lot of time, but there was nothing from where we were up until Mackinac, uh, the Mackinac Bridge. I quickly made a decision to reroute us going a little out of the way, a lot out of the way, and a little further south into Midland where I knew that we were almost rest assured to get help. Um, I didn't know how long we had until uh, we were stuck on the side of the road, so I figure a better chances was closer to a, a larger city. And so I rerouted us without permission. <laughs> it worked out. He's not mad at me. And as we got closer, we had to make a decision what we were going to do. Um, so we ended up finding a Walmart 
getting permission to be able to stay there overnight. We figured that was best case scenario if we needed a battery and we were only a few miles away from all the mechanics in Midland, Michigan. When I ordered the part from O'Reilly's, uh, Keith, I love you, God bless you, but you ordered the wrong alternator. Again, we have two alternators. One's on top, one's on the bottom, one has the uh, voltage regulator in it and that was the one that went bad and so that was the alternator I needed he ordered the one for the bottom and so that put us in Midland Michigan for a whole nother day so um, so far has worked out um, we really kind of debated on whether we were going to order the part here and have it shipped into Munising Michigan where we're going to stay and then kind of worry about it back then. The trick bag was, most cars have one alternator. Most cars run fine on one alternator. Our car could run fine on one alternator. The issue then becomes we're charging two batteries. So our van has two batteries. And so if we overload our, kind of like our backup alternator, that becomes our primary alternator, then we have no backup and overcharging your battery is bad it's probably worse than undercharging your battery because if you undercharge it you know you're gonna need a battery and an alternator if you overcharge your battery yeah you're gonna need a new battery but you may need a whole new electrical system to go with that so we know we didn't want that so we decided that if we could get the right part and get it in it takes like 30 minutes to put in our alternator so it does, it's not very labor intensive. Um, we decided to stick it out. Um, and these guys today, it's about 90 degrees. It's hot. We, I, I was almost tempted to pull out our generator to turn on the air conditioning, but we have such a great breeze. It's real windy. It's not burning, scorching sun. It's cloudy. Um, and the guy comes out, he goes, hey man, you guys want an extension cord to get power for tonight? And we're like, yes, yes we do. So. I think the biggest tip that you know we could give anybody is that you know go local um, we're we're able to save a lot of money on this repair because O'Reilly's Auto Part even though they ordered the wrong alternator I was able to buy the part myself and uh, once you meet some of these local guys that are working in these auto body or these uh, auto parts store they know all the mechanics because all the local mechanics order all the parts from like you know, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, uh, places like that, Napa. Um, so they're gonna know who the good mechanics are in town and that's exactly what we did. We, uh, we ordered the part um, and then I had, the, I had to wait a day in the morning for the part to be in my grubby little hands. And then I pre-called uh, uh, Monday morning, uh, met a guy named uh, Mike who was just, um, uh, Ashley's Garage in Midland, Mike, uh, is just, has just been great. It's just been awesome. So he knew what the problem was. He quickly did a diagnostic on both alternators and said, yeah. He said, your main alternator is, is toast. It's not even charging the battery anymore. Uh, so we were able to get diagnosed the right issue. Um, of course, now I have an alternator that I could use, I could save which I might, I might just keep it. Uh, that's the secondary alternator. Um, and so now we're gonna wait for the new part. And by the way, just so you know, um, you know, we're still in the middle of the pandemic, which means that supply chain parts, they're not easy to get to. So you should know that going in. So if you're driving an older car and you're hauling an RV or towing something, it may not be a bad idea if you can get your hands on a alternator to stow it away in your car someplace because alternators when they go bad that's usually the one thing that's going to keep you stuck for a while um, and uh, I've had alternators go bad I've never had one overcharge my battery before I've never had one do that but uh, it could have easily gone the other way and uh, in the case of our uh, overcharging the guy that Ariane talked to said turn on everything turn on your air conditioning turn on your headlights turn on the radio plug in the cigarette lighter and immediately that helped the situation 
and took the voltage off the battery from being overcharged and we could have probably driven all the way um, but why would you risk that we're here we're safe we're gonna get the part we need and uh, we're gonna be on our way so um, yeah here we go